Hello and welcome to Two Car Pros. Today we're going to be taking a look at how to service the throttle body housing of a Generation 2 Toyota Prius. Let's go ahead and get started. So when I look for codes on this car, I get this error, P1121, which is an acceler accelerator pedal positioning sensor. This can mean two things. Either the pedal positioning sensor is bad and we have to replace it, or we can try cleaning the throttle body housing and that might cure us of this problem. So let's go ahead and get started on that. Okay, so the first thing we can do is remove these clamps on the top of the air box here. To gain access to our filter, we can remove our filter, set that aside, and now we need to remove the air box itself. So we need to remove this, uh, this clamp and these two 10 millimeter bolts. You can remove this clamp with a Phillips head screwdriver or a 10 millimeter socket. I feel like the Phillips head's a little quicker. So, do that, and then we can get our 10 millimeter socket on our ratchet here. The medium extension. Remove these bolts and set them aside. The next thing we want to do is focus on this electrical connector, getting that off there. There's this little tab you push on the housing. Might be a little tricky to get off. So all I'm doing here is using my thumb to push down on the safety and then just using this to kind of just push it off there. Real gentle-like. Once that is off of there, we can pull, we can pull the wire off of the housing itself. go and now we can remove the bottom of the air box what you're looking at here is the top of the throttle body housing so the air goes into here and is controlled by this small uh, valve we can pull off the lines going to it you just gotta remember which ones go where they're kind of shaped so it's easy to remember mine didn't have like a safety on them but it did have this little clip so you might have to pinch that while you're taking it off but it really pulled off very easily Set those aside. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is remove these two tubes on the right and the left. We can use a pair of channel locks to squish the footing out, fitting out of the way, or not fitting, but it's a little spring clamp. And sometimes they're kind of a pain to get to, so be creative. Using some pliers, and when I put them back, I'm gonna rotate them so they're a little easier for next time. Okay, so what I've got here is a pair of uh, vice grips and I've cut some tube and put here. So what this is going to do is grab one of these tubes down here to prevent fluid loss. So you're going to need, this is a good te tech tip here, so this won't damage the tube but it'll hold the fluid in so I don't lose any. Okay, so we're going to take our vice grips here with a little bit of tubing on it, reach down in there. So again, oh, oh, geez. Okay, so that kind of just came off right there. Got a little bit of coolant discharge. Now to keep from making a mess, I've got a little vacuum cap here. Uh, these are available at pretty much any hardware store or auto parts store. And we can put it on the end. That should stem the flow. And then we can worry about the other side. Too. Okay, where you're looking now is behind the throttle body housing, and there's another tube, but I think this one is a vacuum, so you shouldn't need to worry about leaks on this one. So that's nice. If you're wondering what tool I'm using right now to get this off, I have a link, or I have a up in the card about it. It's a snap, not a snap ring, wire, but it's a spring loaded hose clamp tool. Makes this kind of thing a little easier. Which is nice because those are kind of a pain in the neck. So there you go. There's the back tube off the back. I'm pretty sure it's a vacuum tube. 
Uh, and now we can worry about removing the throttle body housing. Okay, the next thing we need to do is remove this electrical connector. You just push on the back of it. You can probably just use your thumb. And walk it back and forth until it comes out like that. And there's another one on the bottom side, but I think it'll be easier to get to once we have removed it from the engine. You know, we can kind of get to the back a little easier. Okay, so basically there's three fasteners that hold this in, these two nuts and this bolt. They are 12 millimeter, so let's go ahead and remove them. And now we have access to that electrical connector I was talking to er talking about earlier. Can't really talk to an electrical connector, I guess you could. That's the last electrical connector. You can just push on the back of it and walk it out. Okay, so I use my little mechanics pick there to uh, push the safety down and then removed it. So that's what that looks like. And now we can remove the throttle body housing so we can go clean it. Okay, so what you need here is some carb cleaner, or I know lots of people like to correct me and say, th you know, throttle body housing cleaner. If you want to use throttle body housing cleaner, go right ahead. Totally up to you. It's totally fine. It's just I have carb cleaner readily available. I've been using it forever. My dad's been using it forever. His dad's been using it forever. So take that with what you will, but carbon cleaner will work. I've even seen people use brake clean, so it's fine. Anyway, what you wanna do here is you see all the, I believe it's called coking in there. You need that gone. You can really see if you flip over to the back side. Oh, ew. See all that in there? It's really not supposed to look like that. You can, yeah, so I can scrape it off with my brand new glove here and you can see it. It's gross. So what we need to do is grab some carb cleaner and a rag. Don't spray your hands. Inside there, you can already see it coming up a little bit. So we need to clean both sides of the valve. Oh yeah, see all that grossness coming out of there? So we need to clean both sides of that and then we can put it back in the car. I'm not gonna record me cleaning this whole thing because you don't need me to tell you how to clean. I'm just gonna show you the end result. You just spray in there and wipe it down. So this is what my rag looks like uh, after I'm done cleaning with it. Gross, right? So I did as best as I could to really get down in there and clean both sides of this valve. I've also cleaned this mating surface here to make sure that's nice and smooth and clean. And obviously on the other side, it's kind of hard to get to, I'm not going to lie. You know, my fingers can't really fit too great down there, and I don't really have big hands, so, you know, best of luck there. Just do your best. It doesn't have to be museum showpiece quality clean. I also had a little brush here. It kind of looks like a toothbrush, right? But it's not. It's like a wire brush. And uh, just kind of went around there and did the best I could. Um, there is a little bit of a dark spot here on the bottom where it kind of says, looks like an upside down B. Um, but it is a lot cleaner than it was, I have to say. So, yeah, see you down in there. Oh, the sides are nice and clean now, and the valve is more or less pretty darn clean. So this is ready to go back in. Okay, and now we can re-plug in that pain in the neck electrical connector that was hard to get to, because if it was hard to get to to unplug, it's going to be hard to get to to plug back in. And then we can replace our throttle body housing. That's nice now, nice and clean. And then you want to tighten them in kind of a star pattern here. And don't tighten one all the way down before you tighten the other. You know, tighten a little here, go across, tighten the other one. Yeah, I just like to snug them up until they stop turning really freely. And then we can start kind of putting a little more pressure on them. And remember, these weren't on super tight when we removed them, so don't put a ton of torque onto them when you're replacing them. Yeah, but they do have to be, you know, reasonably tight. And now we can re-plug in this electrical connector. There's no trick to it. You just push it on. If it's not going on, try flipping it around. So we need to replace the coolant pass-through. So we're gonna kinda make a mess again. See this line, I, I plugged a bolt into there so it stopped leaking on me. 
Now we need the bolt out of the way. It's gonna leak a little bit. That's okay. Okay, so now we can get that spring clamp back where it belongs, right there. Making sure it's behind the barb of that fitting, which it is. So that's good. Now we can bring up the other coolant pass-through line. I wonder if this one leaks. So I thought it was coming the other way. Okay, so yeah, this one doesn't leak anymore. Okay. Doesn't leak anymore. So now the trick will be we can move the oil dipstick out of the way for now. Trying to get that out of the way. That's good. So now we need to get it on the bottom of this one here. We need to remove this vacuum cap. And the quicker we do it, the better off. Just so we don't continuously make a mess. And now we can replace this coolant line. Making sure that the spring clamp is behind the barb, like I stated earlier. Let's wipe this off. So that way we know if it's leaking in the future, we know where from. Okay, that actually looks pretty good. Okay, now we can put this vacuum line back on. At least I think it's vacuum. Like that. And then, you know what? I'm gonna get my little nifty tool out. You could, you could get it with a small set of pliers or something, but I have the tool, so why not use it? I'll cinch it up behind the barb where it was, where I found it. Just like that. Perfect, that's looking excellent. Now the next thing we need to do is replace these hoses here. One of them came with a clamp, but one of them didn't. So I'm assuming one's, one's like a high side, low side thing. See this little clamp here? So we can pinch that as we're going. We're going, we're going down. It's like a really low tension on this clamp, so it may not even be necessary, but I'll show you how to do it anyway. There we go. And now we're ready for the air box. Make sure that's nice and square on there. And we can replace the two 10 millimeter bolts that hold it on. But before we do that, while I have you at this angle, I'm going to go ahead and replace this, uh, this sensor here. Push that back into place, and now we can put those two bolts in. Those are 10 millimeters. In case you forgot, it's okay. Don't really have a torque spec for them. Just uh, tight enough is good. They're, they're not really holding anything insanely important. You just gotta make sure that this doesn't jiggle about. And then we can replace the intake tube. And of course, the adjoining clamp for that, which is way over here. Don't forget to replace your oil dipstick if you removed it earlier, like I did. And now we can replace the filter. Like that, make sure that ring, I don't know, I'm gonna call it a ring gasket, goes into its home. And then we can slide the top of the airbox back into its home. And there we go, job done. So now that we've done the work, we can go in and erase these codes because we did what we think is gonna fix them. So let's go ahead and erase them and it says emission related diagnostic information has been cleared. So if that was the problem and it's fixed, we drive it around for a while, the check engine light doesn't come back on, the problem is fixed. But if the check engine light comes back, then we will probably have to replace the throttle, pos throttle pedal positioning sensor or whatever else the codes come up with. So that's what you do. 
So that's how to service the throttle body for a Gen 2 Toyota Prius. This also covers uh, what to do when you see that trouble code for the throttle pedal positioning sensor, I believe that uh, trouble code was. Um, this is a pretty inexpensive fix. I mean, it really only costs you what carb spray or throttle body cleaner uh, costs, and I think I only used a couple tools there. Uh, as far as the stemming the flow from those two, from those two coolant hoses, you could use both of those techniques, or one of each, or one of the other. I just want to show you two cool ways to stem flow from soft flow hoses like that. Um, all applicable links are down below in the description. You have been awesome. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you're subscribed and like this video if you haven't already, and I'll catch you next time.